Chapter 30 Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, to keep the Passover to the Lord, the God of Israel. For the king had taken counsel and his princes, and all the assembly in Jerusalem, to keep the Passover in the second month. For they could not keep it at that time, because the priests had not sanctified themselves in sufficient numbers, neither had the people gathered themselves together to Jerusalem. The thing was right in the eyes of the king and of all the assembly. So they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba even to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover to the Lord, the God of Israel at Jerusalem, for they had not kept it in great numbers, in such sort as it is written. So the post went with the letters from the king and his princes throughout all Israel and Judah, and according to the commandment of the king, saying, You, children of Israel, turn again to the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, that he may return to the remnant that has escaped of you out of the hand of the kings of Assyria. Don't be like your fathers and like your brothers, who trespassed against the Lord, the God of their fathers, so that he gave them up to desolation, as you see. Now don't you be stiff-necked, as your fathers were, but yield yourselves to the Lord, and enter into his sanctuary which he has sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God, that his fierce anger may turn away from you. For if you turn again to the Lord, your brothers and your children shall find compassion before those who led them captive, and shall come again into this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful, and will not turn away his face from you, if you return to him. So the post passed from city to city, through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh, even to Zebulun, but they ridiculed them and mocked them. Nevertheless, certain men of Asher and Manasseh and of Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. Also on Judah came the hand of God to give them one heart, to do the commandment of the king and of the princes by the word of the Lord. There assembled at Jerusalem much people to keep the feast of unleavened bread in the second month, a very great assembly. They arose and took away the altars that were in Jerusalem, and all the altars for incense they took away, and cast them into the brook Kidron. Then they killed the Passover on the fourteenth day of the second month, and the priests and the Levites were ashamed, and sanctified themselves, and brought burnt offerings into the house of the Lord. They stood in their place after their order, according to the law of Moses, the man of God. The priests sprinkled blood which they received of the hand of the Levites, for there were many in the assembly who had not sanctified themselves. Therefore the Levites had the charge of killing the Passovers for everyone who was not clean to sanctify them to the Lord. For a multitude of the people, even many of Ephraim and Manasseh, Issachar and Zebulon, had not cleansed themselves. Yet did they eat the Passover otherwise than it is written. For Hezekiah had prayed for them, saying, The good Lord pardon every one who sets his heart to seek God, the Lord, the God of his fathers, though not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. The Lord listened to Hezekiah and healed the people. The children of Israel who were present at Jerusalem kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with great gladness, and the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing with loud instruments to the Lord. Hezekiah spoke comfortably, to all the Levites who had good understanding in the service of the Lord. So they ate throughout the feast for seven days, offering sacrifices of peace offerings, and making confession to the Lord, the God of their fathers. The whole assembly took counsel to keep other seven days, and they kept other seven days with gladness. For Hezekiah, king of Judah, did give to the assembly for offerings one thousand bulls and seven thousand sheep. And the princes gave to the assembly a thousand bulls and ten thousand sheep, and a great number of priests sanctified themselves. All the assembly of Judah, with the priests and the Levites, and all the assembly who came out of Israel, and the foreigners who came out of the land of Israel and who lived in Judah rejoiced. So there was great joy in Jerusalem, for since the time of Solomon the son of David, king of Israel, there was not the like in Jerusalem. Then the priests, the Levites, arose and blessed the people, and their voice was heard, 
and their prayer came up to his holy habitation, even to heaven. I heard a loud voice out of the temple, saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the seven bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. The first went and poured out his bowl into the earth, and it became a harmful and evil sore on the men who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped his image. The second angel poured out his bowl into the sea, and it became blood as of a dead man. Every living thing in the sea died. The third poured out his bowl into the rivers and springs of waters, and it became blood. I heard the angel of the water saying, You are righteous, who are and who were, you holy one, because you judge this way. For they poured out the blood of the saints and the prophets, and you have given them blood to drink. They deserve this. I heard the altar saying, Yes, Lord God, the Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. The fourth poured out his bowl on the sun, and it was given to him to scorch men with fire. People were scorched with great heat, and people blasphemed the name of God, who has the power over these plagues. They didn't repent and give him glory. The fifth poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom was darkened. They gnawed their tongues because of the pain, and they blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pain and their sores. They didn't repent of their works. The sixth poured out his bowl on the great river, the Euphrates. Its water was dried up, that the way might be made ready for the kings that come from the sunrise. I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits, something like frogs. For they are spirits of demons, performing signs, which go forth to the kings of the whole inhabited earth, to gather them together for the war of that great day of God, the Almighty. Behold, I come like a thief. Blessed is he who watches, and keeps his clothes, so that he doesn't walk naked, and they see his shame. He gathered them together into the place which is called in Hebrew, Megiddo. The seventh poured out his bowl into the air. A loud voice came forth out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. There were lightning, sounds, and thunders, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since there were men on the earth. So great an earthquake, so mighty. The great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. Babylon the Great was remembered in the sight of God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Great hailstones, about the weight of a talent, came down out of the sky on men. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for this plague is exceedingly severe. Chapter 12 A Revelation Yahweh's Word Concerning Israel Yahweh, who stretches out the heavens and lays the foundation of the earth and forms the spirit of man within him, says, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of reeling to all the surrounding peoples, and it will also be on Judah in the siege against Jerusalem. It will happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all the peoples. All who burden themselves with it will be severely wounded, and all the nations of the earth will be gathered together against it. In that day, says Yahweh, I will strike every horse with terror and his rider with madness. And I will open my eyes on the house of Judah, and will strike every horse of the peoples with blindness. The chieftains of Judah will say in their heart, The inhabitants of Jerusalem are my strength, and Yahweh of armies their God. In that day I will make the chieftains of Judah like a pan of fire among wood, and like a flaming torch among sheaves and they will devour all the surrounding peoples, on the right hand and on the left. And Jerusalem will yet again dwell in their own place, even in Jerusalem. 
Yahweh also will save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of David's house and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem not be magnified above Judah. In that day, Yahweh will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. He who is feeble among them at that day will be like David, and David's house will be like God, like Yahweh's angel before them. It will happen in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. I will pour on David's house and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication, and they will look to me, whom they have pierced. And they shall mourn for him, as one mourns for his only son, and will grieve bitterly for him, as one grieves for his firstborn. In that day there will be a great mourning in Jerusalem, like the mourning of Hadadrimon in the valley of Megiddo. The land will mourn, every family apart, the family of David's house apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Nathan apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Levi apart, and their wives apart, the family of the Shimeites apart, and their wives apart, all the families who remain, every family apart, and their wives apart. In that day there will be a spring opened to David's house and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. I am the true vine, and my Father is the farmer. Every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already pruned clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I in you. As the branch can't bear fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who remains in me and I in him, the same bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If a man doesn't remain in me, he is thrown out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them, throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you will ask whatever you desire and it will be done to you. In this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so you will be my disciples. Even as the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have spoken these things to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be made full. This is my commandment, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant doesn't know what his Lord does. But I have called you friends, for everything that I heard from my Father I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you will ask of the Father in my name he may give it to you. I command these things to you, that you may love one another. If the world hates you, you know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, since I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his Lord. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they don't know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have had sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. 
He who hates me hates my father also. If I hadn't done among them the works which no one else did, they wouldn't have had sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened so that the word may be fulfilled which was written in their law. They hated me without a cause. When the counselor has come, whom I will send to you from the father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the father, he will testify about me. You will also testify because you have been with me from the beginning.